Hey folks, so I thought before we move on to the next PCB reader, uh, it'll actually be interesting to um, to talk about these uh, these beautiful little things which are um, uh, ICs and logic gates and all this kind of stuff. Um, you can see there's one common thing to all these ICs is that they start with something like S74LS. They're all S74LS and these are, these are TTL uh, ICs, uh, transistor to transistor logic. Um, and uh, there's a, a very good uh, reference book for these. It's uh, it's the uh, TTL data book um, by Texas Instrument. Um, what these are essentially, they're just just logic gates of sorts. And you see that uh, most boards are mostly populated with these. What you have typically is a one or uh, one or a few um, uh, processors. In this case, this is the ZAT. You got a few ROMs and then some RAMs, and the rest is typically. Uh, all these TTL and uh, for, I realize that not everybody is familiar with electronics some people might have an interest or might be curious but not everybody is familiar so I thought it wouldn't be a bad thing actually to um, have a look at a few uh, standard t uh, sorry I'm gonna have to move my there you go uh, it would be interesting to have a few um, a look with a theoretical uh, look at a few uh, a few of these ICs and see what they do so I suppose the, the, the first one maybe to, uh, to talk about would be the AND gate. And the AND gate, the, the, there's a symbol which is uh, this. You know, uh, you'll have to excuse my poor drawing skills, but this is an AND gate. And what you have is uh, typically an input A, an input B, and then you have the output Y. And this is how it's, uh, it's shown in the uh, TTL book. Um, so this is an AND gate, and you can see it's more complicated than the, uh, the the schema there because there's well seven legs on each side. What this is, if I uh, if I draw the IC here, you have uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, and seven. Um, and typically these ICs would have a notch here, indicating or or a dot here. And what this means is uh, on the left of this is pin one. This is always pin one and this is always the last pin. And you count them from this way. So this is pin seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is eight. And you count the other way up to pin 14. So this is a typical IC layout. Some have more legs than others, but this is how it works. So five, five, five has, for instance, four pins on each side. But typically, uh, this is not actually relevant for this, but typically this is the layout. And uh, is one thing that is always pretty much the same is that the last pin here on this side is ground. And the first pin here is, uh, well, your, your input voltage. Uh, in our case, for arcade boards and most computers, it's typically uh, 5 volt, plus 5 volt. So that's those two pins taken care of. Now, what are all these? Well, what we have here is actually four uh, of these uh, AND, should, AND gates. And here is essentially input A, input B, and output Y. And then here we have another input A, B, and Y. And on the other side, it's uh, more or less the same, except here we have Y, A, and B, and as you can think, A, Y, and B. But, um, and typically you'd number them, B1, A1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4. So this is, this chip here is a stack of four logic gates. Now how, how do these logic gates here, here are? Well, it's in the name. Um, you're looking for an AND operation. And what an AND operation, it, 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 uh, it, it needs input A and input B to be the same for input Y to be true. So um, they work with a, a truth table. So you have A, B, and Y. And you'll find uh, in, in programming, you often talk about ones and zero. One and zero. And in, uh, when you're designing, you often talk about true and, uh, and false. And when in electronics, you talk about high 
and low but they all mean the same thing okay so um, here for the sake of just ease of representation I'm not going to talk about one and zero but essentially what happens is um, there's a few possible states for this so both zero uh, and then a is one b is zero or a is zero and b is one or they're both at one so what what it, an AND gate actually does is it looks it needs both to be at one to become one anything else outputs zero so it waits for both of them to be switched on um, to out to in turn be switched on so this is the theory and in practice if I switch on this pin uh, if I if I connect this pin to plus five and this pin to plus five this will then output plus five this is the logic behind it so you have other types of uh, of uh, gates you have I'm gonna try and find the best way to uh, uh, show my layout here you have uh, or gates or actually I will uh, I will revise that what you have also is NAND gates uh, and NAND gates are similar to AND gates um, except that <laughs> it's it's uh, it's inverted so a NAND gate so a NAND gate would be represented like this a b sorry um, b it's the same except here this is the sign for an inverter. In fact, you find this sign as well um, on another chip called an X inverter, which is represented by just a straight uh, buffer type line with the dot at the end. And the X inverter takes an input and inverts the output. And uh, we can go that, to that afterwards. But an AND gate essentially is the same as an AND, AND gate, except it inverts the output. So instead, we would have one, 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 and zero and y um, so this is uh, now a NAND gate would be I think ls uh, ls zero zero and an AND gate is ls 8 um, then you have the OR gate now the OR gate is um, represented like this it's actually a curved. Uh, if you find it confusing, just think of it as the beginning of an O. So the AND is straight, like an A, and the OR is rounded. Um, and it works the same way. You have A, you have B, and you have Y. And you have to excuse my poor handwriting. I'm actually doing this through the uh, the phone, and it's <laughs> it's not the best way to do it. Um, so an AND OR gate waits for one or the other to be high, to output high. So the truth table in this case would be A, B, Y, and then we have zero, one, zero, zero, one, and one, one. Okay, so that's our four states that those two inputs could be at. Um, so if, if A is zero and B is zero, the output is zero. There's nothing coming out. If A is 1 and B is 1, the output will be 1, because we are waiting for one or the other to be high. Similarly, A0, B1, we've got 1. And in this case, if both are high, uh, it doesn't matter. At least one of them is high, so we output 1. So this is the the um, the truth table, or the uh, the logic diagram, or the function table, sorry, uh, to, uh, to NOR gate. Similarly, we have NOR gates which would be this, and this is quite the opposite, zero, zero. Um, and then we have all sorts of declinations. So this is a two input gate, but we have, you know, multiple quad input and gate, and then quad input NAND gates, and all that kind of stuff. So um, it gets fairly, fairly complicated fairly quickly, but the, the, the basic building blocks are all these. What we have here is the X inverter, which is essentially a, uh, so X inverter, I think is LSO4. Um, and the OR gate, I uh, forgot, I think it's, uh, is it LS32, something like that. Anyway, the OR, the uh, X inverter takes the input A and uh, I'll put Y or it could be B and inverts it. So if A, if A is one, the output is zero. 
if a is zero the output is one uh, that's actually used in the game boy um screen modification you put the uh, you put the uh, um, there's a filter, a screen, um, 90 degree an angle, and add the X inverter, and it inverts the uh, the, out the output from the screen, or the yeah the output from the chip into the screen, uh, resulting in essentially um, um, high uh, well highs being lows and low being high, but it just the, the colors pop out. Uh, so that's the chip you use when you're uh, when you're doing your Game Boy screen mod. But let's go back to um, to this chip. So this is the theory. So we've got here, we've got four AND gates. Um, so that's the theory, but in practice, how does it work? So I've already uh, taken the liberty to um, to make a small uh, a small breadboard here. I'm powering this. I'm just tapping the plus five from my uh, CPU tester thing. It's just it's more convenient that way. Um, but essentially, so here we've got plus five running to this. Here and we're tapping the plus five to power uh, pin 14 because we said pin 14 is plus five, and then we got ground that we are actually sending over here and powering pin seven. So our uh, little thing here is powered as soon as we engage the button, of course, from my uh, from my uh, uh, ZAT board. And then what are we doing here? So there's a lot of stuff that we actually don't quite need. I have these for convenience. Um, and I'll take, I'll actually take them off. We're going to ground, I'll take them off for now. But what we have here is instead of fiddling with the, with the, um, these jumpers, and I could actually run a, a wire straight from here to here and to, to put them to low. And as soon as I would switch to high, and uh, this would become high. But instead what I'm doing is I'm using two buttons for convenience. So here you can see it's going to this side here. And uh, this is bridge. So the connection goes here, it goes to this resistor and it's tied to low. So this is actually tied low at zero. Um, same thing here, we're going here and this is tied to ground. Um, I'm using this resistor just to prevent, um, yeah. Um, and uh, w these buttons essentially work this way. When you press the button, it bridges this side. The, both sides are bridged and these sides are connected. So here we got plus five. As soon as I press the button, it actually uh, bridges to this side and goes into the input here. If I don't press the button, the input is coming from ground or it's tied to ground, as we say. So as soon as I press this button, this becomes high. As soon as I press this button, this becomes high. And I just want to show you with my um, oscilloscope here. So I'm going to connect pin tree to my oscilloscope. And um, I'm going to lift this guy. So you can see here we've got a, quite a bit of jitter and that's because my ground isn't tied properly. So I'm actually going to tie my ground here. And there we go, we've got no more jitter. Um, I'm going to bring this guy here. So what should happen? So um, to the limit check, yeah, this should be low, there you go. Calibrated this guy to ground. And as soon as I press both button, actually I should engage this guy, right? As soon as I press both button, yeah, this uh, this goes too high, um, and you can see it goes to plus five. Uh, I'm at roughly two volts per division, very roughly. Um, let's focus here. So if I add, um, if I add one of these guys here, ground plus five. Just to get uh, some visible sense of the button being pressed correctly. Um, so if I press uh, and if I press this button, there you go, it lights up. Nothing happens. If I press the second, come on. So if I press this button, it lights up and nothing happens. If I press the second button, at the same time, if I release any of them. So there you go, we have an AND gate um, uh, in the sense that both need to be pressed at the same time. If I take, uh, have I got an OR gate? Disconnect this guy. 
it should work exactly as we predicted we don't care we just want one of these inputs to be high I'm gonna leave this for a second sorry about that so there you go. if you have now the OR gate which is LS32 and uh, I'm gonna need some power and I press any of these uh, we just want one of them to be high there you go it switches to high straight away and the other one and both of them at the same time so this is our truth table um, we just want where is it where's our OR gate we just want one of them uh, this is nor nor so we just want one of them to be high for the output to be high so this is essentially the idea behind logic gates and I could show you the uh, X inverter uh, but this works the same way. What we would see is that uh, as soon as uh, we uh, we um, it should be actually high all the time as soon as we press zero. Um, no, sorry, it should be at one. Sorry, all the time as soon as we engage one of these to be high, the output would be zero. And that's what we would see. So these are logic gates, very very simple in in practice and. Um, not so much in design, I suppose, but um, it's. Uh, I hope this is helpful, folks. It just uh, it goes in the way of you know, maybe demystifying things a bit. So, what these are, they're, they're essentially a more complicated version of, the, of of what we just saw. I mean, we have here LS08, so we have here an AND gate and uh, another AND gate. I think we have a um, LS02 somewhere and. Uh, yeah, we have a few of these and then uh, it goes, you know, into flip-flops and things like that, which are essentially um, just more complicated versions of, uh, of uh, simple logic gates uh, They incorporate uh, some of these. Uh, so this is a, a multiplexer. Uh, so here we have, uh, we have, uh, so that's what's inside the multiplexer. We have AND gates. And we have the quadruple end gates here, and uh, we have X inverters and buffers and all sorts of stuff. Um, so these are essentially more complicated ones. They're actually a combination of all of the uh, basic building blocks. And all of this uh, beautiful stuff ends up uh, making those games that we uh, used to love. So there you go, folks. Um, let me know if you want to know anything or if you want me to uh, go deeper into uh, any of these. I'm trying to keep these very, very simple and uh, light-hearted and uh, so I hope I didn't deter anyone and um, I would encourage you to just grab a few of these uh, a few bridges buttons and transistors and, and just play with them they're actually a, a heaps of fun to, uh, to make little circuits so there you go folks thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time